bring to life two Hall of Fame careers and immortalize them in bronze. Two sculptors in Pleasant Grove, Utah, Blair Buswell and Ben Hammond, accepted the challenge to enshrine the two newest Denver Broncos into the Pro Football Hall of Fame by creating their one-of-a-kind busts. In order to produce the likeliness of Pat Bolin and Champ Bailey, the two artists must first get to know their subjects from the inside out. I love to be able to capture the, or try to concentrate on an expression, a feeling. I want to capture the feeling of the person, not just the likeness. The sculptors have two totally different experiences crafting their busts. Each one of them are unique, trying to capture their own personalities and likenesses. The day before Champ's arrival, Hammond turns a big bag of clay. Go through about 40 pounds of clay per Hall of Fame head. Into a rough version. This is one of those stages where it just looks kind of weird. Of the Hall of Fame cornerback. And we start having Champ Bailey emerging out of clay. So that's the first blocking in stage. Surrounded by mountains, Champ Bailey arrived for his sculpting session on a brisk morning in late April at Ben Hammond's studio. First step, decide what type of expression will forever be preserved on Champ's bust by studying those who came before him. Yeah, so I think the serious look is probably the way to go. Yeah. Well, look like you're good at what you do. Well. <laughs> For the next eight hours, Bailey will sit in a hard back chair and every inch of his head and neck will be scanned and sculpted under the detailed driven eyes of his creator. Do you want uh, the scar on your nose, on your bust? Uh, no. Yeah. It's going to be there for a long time. Might as well make it right. Hall of Fame stuff comes with a lot of responsibility. <laughs> It's not just go get your gold jacket. What seems like just a casual conversation actually is the foundation of building not only a likeliness, but a friendship for years to come. When I go back home, it looks like it did when I grew up. That's, that's just church I went in when I was back home. It looked identical to when I was there. I had a big crow magnon heavy brow on you. Once I took that off, it looks completely different now. It's actually starting to look a little bit like you. It does from here. Yeah. All right, I see. I had you looking like a caveman. <laughs> I didn't expect it to look that good at first. It took a while to look this good, so. <laughs> <laughs> As laughter fills one studio, the tranquility of the other is deafening. Buswell works in silence and is forced to use only still images and video of Pat Bolin to memorialize him. Uh, interview uh, video, and um, that was really helpful because I could, you know, I could turn the uh, as I'm looking and I can freeze frame it and work from that um, angle as if he was here and uh, that's when it really kind of came together for me is working from those videos. The photos and video will suffice to finish the bust but Blair still wanted to meet the iconic Broncos owner so just a few weeks before Bowen's death Buswell flew to Denver for a face-to-face -face meeting with Mr. B. This has been a, a, a challenge and that I, I didn't get to w there when I was with him get to know his personality and get the twinkle in his eye and the things that, um, you know, uh, intensity or uh, softness or things that I'm, I, I do when the inductee comes to my studio. At the time, Mr. B's deteriorating health prevented him from getting to know him personally. But Blair had an idea of how he could still get to know the personality of a man that Alzheimer's stripped away. One of my high school teammates was uh, Rulin Jones, and I was able to get on the phone with him and, and ask him about uh, Mr. Bolin and, and his relationship with him and what kind of guy he was. That conversation with his former high school teammate and the Bronco sack master in the 1980s 
led to the expression that will forever be enshrined in camp. I'm trying to capture him um, more of a, a, with an expression of listening to you, um, being a part of the conversation. And so that, that's where I'm going for. Yeah, no. This, wow. Wait, let me see the nose. Oh, oh God. God. Get the nose. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. He's not done. Receiving approval from a Hall of Famer's significant other is one of the hardest to achieve. So, you know, when I send pictures back and forth over the next few weeks as we finish this up, you know, your wife will have input and your kids might see things that are like, well, that doesn't look right. After a full day in the chair, the first step of the process that was created centuries ago is complete. This is man fire melting down the elements and... So there's no other way to do no. it? No. The next time Champ will see his bust in person will be during the enshrinement ceremony in Canton. Put the bronze on it right now, you know, it's ready. I don't know. I feel like you do anything else, you're going to mess it up. After the posing session, final details are added before taking them to the foundry to start the long process of bronzing the bust. Well, the casting process is the lost wax process. Make a, a basically a rubber mold of the original. Once the mold's been taken off, they will pour wax in the, in the mold. And then they'll let it cool and take the mold off the wax and now you have a hollow wax copy. So now I'll, I'll just check and make sure that any imperfections or bubbles or seams. The wax bust are sprayed then dipped in slurry, converting them into a cast that can withstand over 2200 degree temperature. The oven melts the wax, creating the hollow shell and is now ready for the pour. Molten bronze is carefully poured, immortalizing the iconic bust that will live in the Pro Football Hall of Fame forever. After cooling, imperfections are scraped away, then prepped for the final step in the journey. We're sandblasting the surface of the metal so that it will accept the patina. Coloring the bronze, so you're staining it little by little. Coloring the bust involves heating, layers of stain, and a watchful eye to know when the perfect color is achieved. The two-month process is now complete. Satisfaction for the sculptors knowing that their work will live forever in camp. I get to appreciate it a lot more, but to actually see him do it firsthand and how it starts and his talent, I mean, it's, it's my level of appreciation uh, shot through the roof.